views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Demartini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. I want to welcome you. Welcome to the show. Hey, it's really good. Back in the studio. Back in the old saddle again. That's what we love to do. It's uh, it's all it's just great to be connecting with all of you guys. And thank you so much for all of your patience. Um, we are, in, as many of you know, we have been making some seriously cool changes to our websites, our interfaces, and much more. And I just wanted to mention that uh, for those of you out there, um, phase one went really, really well. Uh, phase two and three are in the process. You may not know it, but if you're clicking around and maybe some pictures are not popping up or, you know, something is just not showing up the way you thought it would, just give us another two days and everything will be right back at you. But for many of you, um, you hadn't noticed a thing. Why is that? That's because we got some folks that have done some miracles, and I'm really, really, really thrilled with all of that. Lynn Brown is in the house, and, you know, the reason that this is really kind of cool is because we're going to be talking about something that many of you can relate to and relate to at a very deep and profound level. Uh, But what is it when we talk with Lynn about her platform, about what she's created? Get into it, winning at the game of life. Uh, joining me here today, my co-host, Lynn Brown. Today, you're going to hear an experience. Uh, you're going to hear about an invitation, an opportunity. You're probably going to hear about some things maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe you hadn't heard about before. But even if you have heard about them, you're going to hear about them in a different way. And why is that? It's because Lynn is on a mission. And whenever we are in that place where we're on a mission, where we get tapped on the shoulder tapped on the head, hit by a two by four, whatever, whatever is operating for you in your next level of awareness, something has to change. So today, um, Lynn is going to be talking with us about what the astral plane is. What is it? How do we look at astral uh, as our ally? What is it? And how do we leverage this energy, this opportunity to enhance our lives? Uh, But most importantly, what is it when somebody like Lynn steps into this world and says yes to something that perhaps originally didn't know much about, but now has become what she is of service to to be in this world? Lynn, welcome to the show. It's great to have you here. Thank you. It's great to be here. Astral. It sounds like a sci-fi movie, right? (laughs) I mean, we were commenting that. Uh, I didn't bring my Alienware computer today. And you were like, oh, that would have been appropriate. Yeah, it would have actually probably pretty ben- it would have benefited the the show i'm sure <laughs> oh, well and there's a reason for it because of the topic right right you know we're talking about astral uh and many people don't know what that is uh so why don't we start off with a a, a kind of conversation about what it is but mostly how does it relate to your journey sure um you know what's interesting is is that i have played in this world of of dreams, of visions, of very vivid dreams, uh, where I'm being taught things, where I'm speaking to angels, where I'm flying in in Star Trek like sh- you know ships, and um, I I just always thought that was normal. I thought that was natural. I thought that everybody had those dreams. I thought that everybody had 
uh, helpers that they knew on the other side or during Dreamland. And, and um, it wasn't until a couple of years ago uh, in when I was in my psychic teachings and community that people started pointing out to me, no, Lynn, this is not normal. And I, what I mean by not normal is I think that everybody has these experiences. It's just whether we're conscious of them and do we remember them. And so uh, I began to start really embracing you know, this gift of that I can remember these things and I can uh, travel to different dimensions through my dream time or even awake. And that's kind of the, you know, what the topic is today. I wanted to help to demystify this experience. And so I needed to then, you know, after talking to you and and we were talking about this show, really go back Mm -hmm. in time and say, well, where does this originate? What yeah. do most of the people out there in the world, well, not even necessarily the world, I would say more the United States and the Western world, um, what is their perception? Where is the fear around this? Where are people getting caught up and trapped and tripped? And 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 how can we maybe open them up to another way to utilize this time? You know, if we spend probably, in my opinion, one third of our lives, if not more, in this astral state in this different consciousness and that's really all is to me is this different level of consciousness Uh where we can access anything we want to we can create anything we want to Um, and so I had to reach back and start to say well what what are people seeing out there what are they hearing about this experience and and why is there so much fear around it because to me it's game it's life it's fun yeah but some people don't even know what it is I mean so you know when we say astral plane or astral projection um, you know, there's a lot of meaning to it that folks don't even know. And I think that, you know, what we're doing in the show is we're telling people, you know, if we have to describe what it is, here are a couple of ideas in describing it and ask yourself this question, you know, has this ever happened to you? I mean, have you ever done this before? And I would venture to say that if you really tap back into, you know, points in time in your life, you'll be able to, re- you'll be able to relate to that. Definitely. You, well, you know, I, I went on and I Googled astral projection because I wanted to know. Don't we love Google? <laughs> yeah. Google? I wanted to know what were other people thinking? What would other people stumble on yeah. um, to learn about this this knowledge in this wor- world? And <clears throat> what I found was, <clears throat> excuse me, what I found was YouTube videos uh, and and images. And this is the most prominent image that I think people might see out there is an image of like an etheric body uh, with an umbilical type cord attached to the physical body. Right. Mm-hmm. Like that's what I think of when I think of what society has told us astral travel is. Right. Mm-hmm. There's this part. There's this time where if you really concentrate or if you have the magic or if you have the skills, you're a part of your etheric body can leave your physical pl- body um, and travel to other places. You can you can look at different things. You can talk to different people. Uh, but then there's this fear around it, right? Because there's so much focus on, well, what, ab- what about that umbilical cord? What if it gets snapped? Then you're going to die. You don't return to your body. You know, there's this fear around it. And um, there's also the fear of, well, when you get out to the astral plane, what's out there to meet you? You know, there's so many things yeah. out there yeah. out there to meet you. But um, really all it is to me is is a different state of consciousness that you go into, which opens a door to different dimensions. Now, for example, let's let's bring this back to like Earth. So Uh-oh. let's bring this back to Earth. That, so, OK, that, so, now, now, now we're talking <laughs> the scary part for me. I was really OK if we we're going to stay out there in the, you know, like stratosphere. But you're going to bring me back to Earth. Now we're going to talk about the real deal, right? Yeah. Well, haven't we all been like we're sitting there talking to a friend and our friend goes, well, where were where were you? Where were you? That, just in that then? moment? Yeah. Oh, where were you? How and many you're... times do you think that's happened to me? Linda, 1-800-930-2819. You could really pretty much tell them, right? But no kidding, right? Right. So it's not that mystical. It's not that dramatic of a thing. It's not that scary of a thing. Like, we're Let me ask you a question about that before you go on, because I I think you're unusually, you're unusual. (laughs) You you really are in a good way. But how many of us, when people ask us that, come up with a big fat lie? How many of us, when somebody says, oh, where were you just then? Oh, I was thinking about my gro. No, you weren't thinking about your groceries. You were visiting your cosmic twin somewhere, right? 
But but how many of us come up with like a little story, especially if it's your boss? Right. Like, your boss, like <laughs> right. It, right. Your boss would say to you, right. Oh, Lynn, where'd you just go? Oh, no, I'm I'm over there counting numbers. Yeah. Oh, no, you're really not. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Gotcha. So, tell my financial planning boss that I'm, that I'm out um, <laughs> talking to Ascended Masters. No, <laughs> you know, we kind of have this feeling or sensation of like snapping back into our body um, rushing back into our body when yeah. we're like, oh, where were we? Or even when we're driving and we go somewhere else, uh, when we're daydreaming. And and I don't want to get into like the scientific, is daydreaming really astral traveling? But to me, this what we're really talking about is uh, opening ourselves to being aware about the fact that we can unconscious, you know, our unconscious body and our astral body can travel to these different dimensions and these different places. Um and it can happen when you're awake. We mm-hmm. just talked about some examples. But mm-hmm. and when we when we sleep, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's not a matter of is astral travel only when you're sleeping? Is astral travel only are you only doing astral traveling, for example, if when you wake up you remember your dream? I say no. I think we're doing it all the time. Uh, if when you wake up, you're remembering your dream? Correct. Yeah. Who made up that rule? Yeah, anyway? I don't know. I, don't, I got to really, you know, like, I don't know. <laughs> Whoever you are, if you made up that rule, let's talk. Um, I, I, you know, that is like a man-made rule. I, I definitely right. believe that. Right. Because it's it's got to be something for all the triple Virgos and the left brain people yeah. to really rationalize and understand, oh, my friend's really not on the verge of being committed. There's maybe something else going on, right? Right. But in our pop culture, we have movies left and right now, okay? We we have things happening right now that really point to this, not as a phenomenon, but as something that we can wrap our minds around, don't we? Definitely. Um, I was just um, kind of giggling and thinking, oh, my gosh, I, I would want to go experience this through these movies a little bit, right? Because I have my perception and my experience, but... What are people experiencing? Well, we have, you know, the X-Files. Uh, there was a movie released, I don't know, probably five to seven years ago called Men Staring at Goats with George Clooney, uh, which was about um, soul travel to do remote viewing during the Cold War to spy on the other countries. And, you know, I don't know, and it, they even disclose this is based on a true story. I don't know how many people actually truly comprehend and believe that that was happening. But to me, that's astral travel in the awake state. When we're able to, uh, a piece of us is able to go journey off to a different um, country or anywhere right. and observe these things. Um, and then even more, uh, even more recent... Um, there is a movie with Robin Williams uh, called What Dreams May Come. And uh, it was really colorful and everything that he thought of, he created instantaneously. And it took, us, it took him into the Akashic Records. And um, I think that's a really good uh, visual for people to watch and say, oh, my gosh, I, I do do this. You know, it's, it's not as complicated as perhaps people make it seem. Well, it's not as complicated as people make it seem, but more importantly, we relate to it. I mean, you know, for me, I one of the best movies I'd seen in a long time, which did not do well at the box office. Why? I don't know. Like, you know, Scarlett Yo- J- Johansson. Are you dogging ScarJo? No, I love ScarJo. I do, too. I love <laughs> ScarJo. But a move, one of her movies that didn't do, like, super well... So I don't she, know why. Like the super smart woman on the planet. Or Lucy. Whatever. It yeah. was Lucy. Absolutely yeah. Lucy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and why didn't it do well? I'll tell you why, right? Because the last part of everything was okay when she was like, you know, her brain was at 100%. But the minute that she started to astral travel back in time, beyond the dinosaur, I, I mean, honestly, mm-hmm. it was like people were like, what just happened there? So aren't we really talking about a pop culture that's trying to reach out and give us like a blueprint for this and people really having a disconnect at their ability to even experience that? Right. And I think that's based on, you know, the the, the blueprint that we are living off of right now is uh, hundreds of years old, I, I believe. The information out there is back from the 17th, the 18th century, where the... Um, You know, people started writing about this because they started having mystical experiences. Mm -hmm. They started having this these dream visions. They were instructed to write um, different books. Then scientific studies started happening. Um, But somewhere back in back in that time period, 
um, because of the uproar with the churches and the laws and the suppression of and the fear of people, all that stuff kind of got squashed mm-hmm. uh, down below the ground and um, into secret societies and whatnot. And I think it just kind of remained there. And what has what has been released to us now, or what we can tap into, is still the same theory. Well, the th- I think that pro- I think the problem with that personally is that a lot of that stuff um, was written back in a time where we barely understood how the mind works. We barely understood how does the mind mm-hmm. actually speak to the body, right? So there was a there was a really good, to the best of their ability, the people who were, who were having these experiences were trying to bring that information to the forefront. Um, but, but we were working, again, on a blueprint that's so old to our physical body. I mean, we know so much more mm-hmm. about life and about uh, the universe now. You know, even scientists would admit there's, you know, the world is not square, right, you know? Right, right. So... Um, to take that old blueprint and try to make sense of it as a starting point for our today astral experiences, just in my mind, doesn't really mm-hmm. it doesn't really make sense to me because we're so much more evolved as humans and as spirits and as our, in our ability to uh, hear, see, feel the spiritual realm. Yeah, the other thing that's really interesting, and let's take a short break. We'll talk about this when we come back. You know, we're talking about experiences in this phenomenon. You know, when we come back, Lynn's going to take us through some of these. You know, what are these experiences we're referencing? And what is it about our technology that can either, some people believe, it actually is accelerating our ability to do this. Others believe it's becoming a distraction. It's noise in the channel. I don't know. What do you believe? Do you think being plugged in into the world of digital nothingness is something that helps us? Or do you believe that those electromagnetic fields have an opportunity to open a gateway? When we come back, Lynn's going to share us some experience about the phenomenon. It's going to share what does this really mean? How does this show up in our lives? And why is it so important to demystify? Stay tuned. We'll be right back with Lynn Brown. My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basili is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, remove your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Speaker, teacher, channel, clairvoyant, Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst who channels a powerful energy from source to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy or from illness into health leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the ascended masters and archangels you will not be the same visit transformationtalkradio.com for show dates and times and lesliefontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance How would you like increased health and vitality? How would you like to avoid the onset of disease as well as slow the aging process? This is all possible through a simple, safe, and natural process. Every day we are either moving toward wellness or away from wellness. Hi, I'm Mary Jane Mack. I'd like to be your partner in achieving optimal health. Contact me now at MaryJaneMack.com or call 425-392-0659. Visit MaryJaneMack.com.
Hey, everybody, welcome back. It's so great to have you tune us in, turn us on. You know, Lynn, before we talk about this, um, you know, there are a couple of things that I think are important to let folks know more about you, to let them know about how they can find out more about you, your upcoming events. You know, you have pheno- you just had a phenomenal event. I mean, you know, you literally are taking people on these experiences, hence the reason for doing this show, right? Right. You right. know, the first of many. Definitely. Um, we had originally planned on, t- on talking about this before the retreat that I just got done doing, but after the retreat and the amount of information and the experiences that people had on this retreat we had in eastern Washington called Astro Allies, um, I couldn't not talk about it. And there was so much demand. You know, people came back uh, to the Seattle area, just totally changed. Their their mind and their eyes open wide. And there's been so much talk about it that people have called us and said, can you please do another one? Can you please, please do another one? So, so uh, Wendy Wolf and I are going to do another one um, in uh, the end of September. You can uh, find out more information on my website, the letter R, the letter U, com. And I'm so excited to take people through this journey and uh, just let them play yeah. in the playground. You yeah, know? and you know what it is is why do you think so many people are like, uh, okay, yeah, we're really excited about it. I mean, what what do you think is going on right now in terms of how people are willing to experience this? Because that's really now what we're talking about. We're talking about the experiences of this phenomenon and why people, once they experience it, they want more. You know, it's you can't get enough. So, right? Right. I think, uh, you know, it's so magical, and I think that now... Uh, we're starting to allow magic to be okay in our lives. You know, we're not so constrained and constricted to um, the everyday stay in a box. And (laughs) I think that the more and the more people that are out there that say, no, it's okay to come play and it's safe and, in fact, it's encouraged, um, it just benefits all other aspects of your life. I think people get pretty excited about that. Um, You know, my experience with this phenomena is somewhere between the movie staring at goats et and the you know what dreams may come i you know i grew up thinking like i said before that everyone had vivid dreams um spoke to different beings um traveled to other galaxies and and i have to admit there were some scary times in those dreams i think that everybody has had nightmares before so again it doesn't have to be as scary as um some people talk about it but but what i've learned is that uh, it's all just training grounds, right, to uh, to teach us how to embody more seniority around our life, around all aspects of our life. And why do you think that's so? I mean, you know, I know that there are goals that you have for demystifying this. You know, people would say, you know, what is it? You know, what is it to me? What do I have to learn? I mean, how is this going to help me in my day to day? Sure. Well, here here's why it's so important to me, because, you know, if we look out across the, the land of people we know, right, there are some people that we know in life that, that life just happens to them all the time. It just happens to them. And then there's another end of the spectrum where people are happening to life, right? They control life. Um, and what I feel is people who are unintentionally experiencing and living in the astral world are letting life happen to them. They're, you know, Again, a third of their life is just kind of happening to them. Um, and I want to switch that around to help empower people and help people... Uh, realize that they can start to leverage this space in this time um, in their life. So, you know, I want to demystify what the astral body is. I want to demystify uh, astral projection and that it's not actually um, a part of your body. It's not as scary as you, we read about um, and, and the infamous cord. You know, I as I was doing the research on this, I thought to myself, oh, my gosh, if I don't if I didn't have these experiences, I would be a little bit <laughs> afraid, yeah. you know, based on what I found out there. And then and I and I was telling uh, a friend of mine, you know, there's so much information on this infamous cord. And to be honest with you, I've never even seen the cord, mm-hmm. you know, so obviously there's an importance to it, which I appreciate. Uh, but it's not like the thing, you know, if you're not seeing a cord, that doesn't mean you're not participating in these dimensions. Yeah. And yeah. Um, it's not just for a chosen few. It's not impossible, unattainable. Uh, we can begin to release the fear around being in such an intense, mystical, and even forbidden thing to make it just natural. Um, what it is to me is, like most things in life, it's a matter of owning your intention around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I would explain it as 
your mind just reaching and participating in a different level of consciousness. And in that level of consciousness, you can go anywhere and do anything. You are not bound by the physical laws and limitations of the physical plane. Um, to me, like I mentioned before, it can be as simple as uh, the daydream or when you wake up in the morning and you're kind of tired like you've been out traveling all night. Well, it's because you have been out traveling all night, you know, uh, even if we don't exactly remember it. Um, we all do it naturally. Right. We just may not recognize it as such. And we all participate in nighttime activity, even if we don't remember it. Right. Right. And, you know, part of this, though, is, you know, us trying to figure out why we are so exhausted all the time. You know, what is that state of overwhelm? And, uh, you know, aren't we at a place where there could be a, a couple of possible reasons for that? You know, one might be the resistance to the knowledge and the wisdom that's coming to us. And another might be the absorption of it. Let's talk about that when we come back from break. Lynn Brown is in the house, everyone. If you want to call in, you want to get connected, you want to chat with Lynn, one 800 930 Give us a shout. We'll be right back with the show. Praise the Lord. You don't really care for music, do you? It goes like this. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie DeLuce at info at ronniedeleuceonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie DeLuce, your partner in wellness. Are you ready to thread your life with intuition? Intuit Apparel can help you do just that. This is not just about a piece of clothing. This is about a movement, an awakening, and staying centered in life. Your life. Intuitive and host of the radio show, Get Into It, Lynn Brown, was given this image with the intention of a clothing line designed to represent the essence of life itself. Visit IntuitApparel.com now and wear your intuition with pride. Are you feeling stressed, in pain, disconnected, worried about aging? Corrective alignment and integration therapy restores health. Move your body, which frees your mind and elevates your spirit. BodyWise Bodywork LLC provides the tools you need to create the change you've been waiting for. Start living a fully present and integrated life. Book your 15-minute consultation online at www.bodywisebodywork.com. BodyWise Bodywork LLC, because it's the only body you've got. If you're one of the millions of Americans suffering from anxiety, you probably know how powerless and out of control this emotion can make you feel. This is why it is so important to remember that anxiety is created by your mind, which means that you can learn to use your mind to uncreate it. Hello, my name is Dr. Friedman Schaub. My award-winning book, The Fear and Anxiety Solution, provides you with a step-by-step -step breakthrough process to understand and resolve the root causes of your anxiety and build a solid foundation of confidence and inner peace. If you are ready to take your power back, visit thefearandanxietysolution.com. That's thefearandanxietysolution.com. Or call 866-903-6463. That's 866-903-MIND. Call the Oprah of Radio by her listeners. Award-winning host Dr. Pat Basile is blowing the doors off of traditional talk radio. Get ready for an energizing delivery and powerful interviews with leaders in the field of human potential. Dr. Pat's fresh new perspective on living life full out has catapulted her show to the top of talk radio. Tune in and Dr. Pat will help you thrive instead of merely survive. Visit the drpatshow.com. That's T H E D R Pat show.com for listening times in your area. This floor. I used to live alone before I knew you. I've seen your flag on the marble arch. Love is not a victory march. It's a cold and it's a broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. If you watched The Voice last night, guess what? Or Dancing with the Stars. 
Yeah, they were like on another planet for sure. Yeah, I, I really think that when you show up with that much talent, you got to know you're getting some help from somewhere else. Lynn Brown is in the house. We're so thrilled to be talking with her about her journey and her discovery and what she is now saying yes to the world to share. You know, when we're talking about, uh, in, you know, this level of intelligence, how about calling it astral intelligence? You know, how about looking at what this means? You know, the whole idea about astral projection and, you know, what Lynn is discovering and now helping others discover through her workshops, through her one-on-one work, uh, for those of you out there. And so we gave you a backdrop for, you know, some of the history behind all of this and also talked a bit about, you know, how this astral projection, how the whole astral phenomenon is showing up in our pop culture. And I know you can point to it. We mentioned a couple of movies, but, you know, there's much, much more. I mean, just about, just think about it. You know, what are the television shows out there? If you eliminate NCIS and all of them, and you look at what's being, you know, populating the, you know, the television world, you know, it's not reality television much anymore. You know, it is phenomenon of something that is so out of the realm of our everyday life that's being projected, whether you're talking about the dome or you're talking about something else. You know, you're really looking at something that is, quote, not of this earth. And so the question that comes to mind is, why is that? You know, why are things now being projected into the forefront that are not of this earth? Where are the ideas coming from? And how do we get to participate? Lynn, thank you for a great show. So let's talk about this astral body, how it relates to the body we're in, and, you know, how it doesn't. Great. Um, You know, and I was given, during the astral weekend that we had, I was actually shown a lot more details and components than I was ever aware of. So so that's neat. It's like new information that I get to bring to the forefront. Um, And I'm going to try to keep it pretty simple. Um, I'm not so left brain. I'm more visual and just like, let's get to the the action of it. Um, And so there's three components that I see are, are super important. Now, there's more than that, but there's three three main basic ideas. And one is, of course, we have a physical body, right? We have the physical body, which physically walks on the earth, which encompasses our conscious mind. Um, and then we have the astral body, which, you know, people see it or don't see it, or it's an etheric body or it's an invisible body. To me, that doesn't, re- it's not so important. It's just, this is the component of ourself that leaves at night to go be on these different planes. To me, the astral body has uh, the shape of our physical body. Just to me, it does. And it has all of the senses, if not more. You know, So we get to go experience, touch things, feel things, um, love things. We have all of those senses still in our astral body. And so this is um, the body part which holds the unconscious data and data from our experiences out there. Right, And then the third component, which I think is often overlooked or not even known about, is what I have come to see as astral optics, which is the layer which ties those two together. It's the layer that communicates the astral body information and experiences back into the physical body so that we can literally embody the experience which you just learned mm-hmm. from on the astral plane. Um, you know, we can talk about astral memory, helping with that process. Um, and, you know, we taught you asked about the sluggishness, and, and sometimes I see that as, you know, we're not fully coming back and being present in our physical body when we come back from the astral experience. So... Um, that can that can lead to some of the tiredness is actually not coming back totally from not unplugging from that dream. Well, experience. yeah, and you know what? You go through a week and you have a whole week of these, and you get to the weekend and you're wondering why you can't get out of bed. You know, because part of what you're doing is helping us understand this. Because if you don't understand this, there is a cumulative effect to this. It really is, and I think one of our callers is going to have a question di- directly about that. Okay, why don't we Sounds go to the good. phones? Mr. Benny, we have Corey. Hi, Corey. Hi. Um, I just was flipping around at the stations, and I yeah. heard you say something that, that really, uh, really like interests me. So I'm experiencing this uh, spontaneous, you know, astral travel. Yeah. Um, and I have what she. I just heard her mention something. Uh, Lynn. Was yeah. That, yeah, know, Lynn. yeah. Yeah. Lynn. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you said that you know your life feels like it's not 
happening is like happening to you and that's mm. what i'm experiencing like my life's not good it's like stuck in like a holding pattern uh but then i'm having these like it really extraordinary like um uh, like quantum <laughs> i mean like i go to this place where there's like these diamonds and then you then you, i choose a diamond mm. and then i shoot myself into it and then i go to these places and i'm talking to people and it feels as real as i'm talking to you i mean it feels as solid as that and then when I come back, um, it begins to fade, and it, it feels completely real. And then as I get back, it starts to fade really rapidly. Until then, it starts almost like as a memory, it begins to feel like a dream. But when you're there, it's incredibly real. I mean, it feels like you're just in another place. You just spent four hours with somebody. <laughs> right. And asked a bunch of questions, and they gave you some answers. And I mean, it's, it's crazy. It but, is. It feels like I'm not grounded or something, and, you know, there's, I'm sensitive to energies and all that stuff, too, which is a bummer, but, uh, you know, in my regular life. But mm -hmm. what do you suggest, or, I mean, do you have a, I'm just, which exactly what you said is exactly what's going on with me. Right. You know. Well, um, about, Corey, I mean, I think that this is a great, great example, because I, I just want to validate, I mean, I these are exactly the nighttime experiences that I have. And w here's two things that I picked up on. Um, one is what I've experienced and I, th I thoroughly believe is when we're, we get to go to these places and experience all this magical stuff, right, uh, which is very yeah. real to our senses, and it gives us a playground to test the laws of gravity. It gives us a place to understand universal law. It gives us a place to learn from these higher powers um, where in our physical body, in our awake state, we're just probably too afraid. We're too afraid. Right. There's too much fear in our system from this life, from past lives um, to really experience that stuff. And, and so this is an opportunity to be out there doing this exploration and really learning. And then you get to bring the information back to your physical body. And now that's the part that you're, you know, kind of question about, too, is this integration process. And I'm actually, in the next 10 or 15 minutes, I'm going to take everybody through a process of helping you to remember that stuff in integration. Um, so hopefully you can you can stay on air um, with that. I've also learned that, um, in specific to you, uh, some maybe some additional grounding. I've really, really um, enjoyed working with. There's some very specific gems and rocks that just really help to ground the body and ground the space of the room. Um, and then some oh. intention, uh -huh, and then some some intentional stuff right before you go to sleep. And and again, this is um, this is a this is a muscle that you're building, and so. Uh, you're going to learn really quickly how to embody that and bring that back and start integrating it. And I think the process that I'm going to walk everybody through is going to answer that your direct question too on how do I keep um, boosting that memory? How do I not let that fade away and not slip away? So uh, we're going to touch on that here for everybody here in a minute. Yeah. Corey, does that make sense? You got that? Yeah. 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 Good. Yeah. Well, stay tuned because you're going to hear lots more about it. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Can you yeah. Can you can you tell me uh, the stones you use? Oh, oh, well, see, oh yeah. The, you know what? Actually, for everybody, for everybody out there that's listening, um, mm -hmm. I have like three to four pages of very specific s stones and essential oils um, that I would recommend that assist you in this. And then I always second that by please check in with your intuition because your intuition is going to know best at all times, right? So there, it would be a general idea and concept, but you always have to test it with what is your body, what is your spirit specifically needing. So anybody who wants that, just you can go ahead and send me an email through uh, lynn at the letter R, the letter U, intuit.com, and I will email that out to you. Awesome. Cool. Thank you, Corey. Thank you. Um, well, you know, part of this is really taking a look at a number of different things that we have going on and helping people get, you know, experiences from it. Now, before we jump ahead, we'll skip the next break, but let's go to our separate, let's go to our next caller. We have Dawn that has called in. She's got a, She's really talking about the dream thing that you mentioned. So I think this would be good to address this. Dawn, welcome to show. Hi, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. How can, how can, uh, how can we help you today? So 
uh, I think I just heard Lynn say she's going to give us tools because my original yeah. question was, how do we begin the process to mm. increase our awareness so we're remembering our dreams yeah. and integrating them? Yeah. If that's what you're, if that's some of the uh, tips you're going to give us, then I'll ask you a secondary question, which is, how do we support our children? Because uh, my young kids often have nightmares. Mm. And what are nightmares, mm. you know, what's happening in their astral field that they're having nightmares? You know, I hope that Lynn Brown, I hope she does this. I hope she creates like one of these astral retreat things she did here a couple of weeks ago at this beautiful place. I hope she does things for parents and kids. I hope she puts something together that gets the parents and the kids together to take the journey because your question yeah. is so pivotal how how honoring you are to actually see this in your children because most kids they don't really get not not one cent a time around this issue lynn what do you got mm-hmm. to say uh yeah um it's funny because don i was that kid you know i was that kid going through this and um i had parents that that supported me they didn't have the tools to support me but they didn't squash the um the uh, the action or what I was saying and here's here's what I have to say about that um, in a in a in a brief sentence your child is really learning how to be senior to all spirits out there I mean your child is learning how to flex his spiritual muscles um, in the different plane again that in the physical plane our body just limits us to earth experiences right and in the astral plane we're able to encounter so many different uh training aspects i mean uh, what i experienced growing up was now that i looked back a lot of nightmares but i i always knew as a child even i mean year year three (laughs) um when there was something too scary in my dreams i would always call it the name jesus and instantly and i don't know how i knew to do that well now i know how because we're spirits and we all we know those things, right? So it instantly removed any darkness, any fear, any danger that I perceived out on the astral when I would just call it to Jesus. So we're always protected out there. We're just kind of I feel like we're going through a training um so that we can bring those tools back and bring that spiritual seniority back to the earth plane and help move everybody along. Mhm. That makes mm-hmm. sense? Thank you. Yes, it does. Awesome. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Um, Now, people are going to be looking for this tool, but before we get to it, we still have a couple things we want to talk about here. You know, that really talks about, you know, this intergalactic travel and what that actually means. Uh, You know, all you got to do is turn into, what is that channel? The The history channel that does all these ancient alien things and these scientists that are showing up, and they would swear that, oh, my goodness, these these phenomena we have in the world, we didn't do by ourselves. You know, there is no way that those pyramids got done like, you know, like the way that everybody's thinking they got done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. But, boy, do we want to take credit for that, huh? Right. Uh, no, no, I think it's, I think it's uh, this astral time and these astral periods and what I would call is astral intelligence. I mean, it's, it's critical for for everything that manifests here in the physical plane. Um, you know, I, I, I'm excited to talk about the, well, so what? You know, I, and why I'm so passionate about this is because um, I'm going to talk about a few ways that I leverage these astral experiences to bring back information into my daily lives, uh, which we can all do. You know, we can try out different scenarios before you play it out in your physical life. Uh, you can build your understanding of a certain topic. You can see what other planets look like. You can search for a create, you know, a creative idea. You can meet clients. What, are you? Do you own a business? Are you working in a company? You can meet clients on the astral and have them find you on a physical plane. You can teach on the astral plane and have those same students come find you in the physical plane. There's, it's really limitless, and we start to be intentional about it. Um, it's, it's really fun to watch the two worlds integrate. So here, the, there's. Um, there's one thing that, that I have really enjoyed doing, and that's um, in my astral dreams and in my astral time, I'll have a vivid recollection of conversations I have with people. 
who are struggling with a physical or emotional aspect of their lives, uh, kind of like what Corey was saying, it's as real to me as the conversation I'm having right now. Um, all the senses I remember, all the colors I remember. Um, and these, this person will tell me what their problem is or what they're struggling with or what part of their body's hurting. And, um, and, then, and then I wake up and I remember that dream, right? And, but that's not where I stop. I actually take a leap of faith and I'll reach out to them on the physical level and let them know that they showed up in a dream and this is what they were expressing to me and I have a conversation with them that leads to a healing for them on the conscious level, right? Because in the, on the unconscious plane, they already know what the issue is. They already know where the um, ailment is stemming from. And they help me to see that and and to know those things, and then I can actually bring it back to them in a waking state on a conscious level. Well, I and they instantly heal themselves. They well, heal themselves. I don't heal them. I know, but they you know what? Themselves. Come on. I, I think that, you know, let's have a little credit right here for this, that, you know, one of the things that I know that I really count on is working with somebody like you and like with Wendy, because I'm so knee deep and stuck in my own stuff, right? Right. That you can't really see it. You know, I mean, it's kind of like, you know, some of the things that we do in our day-to-day life, right? If you create something that's like at a job function, don't you want to show somebody that hasn't looked at it before and say, hey, you know, what do you think? And they come back and say, oh, my gosh, you know, that font you, you, you selected is, I can't even read it, right? Right. Right? And don't you see that, that you know, part of this is helping facilitate an awakening? Sure. Right? Absolutely. Now, maybe, and I know you've gotten help with your own. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So isn't that what you're saying is you're creating these opportunities for people to actually accelerate the pace. So it's an accelerated pace. Yes. Not that you're not going to get to it ultimately. Right. Right. But it it will allow you with such an ease and like what you're saying, such an ease, such quickness, such knowingness. It's like you don't have to you don't have to stay in um, kindergarten in school for 10 years. You know, you get to just. Um, somebody can come and like tap you on the shoulder, boop, you download this information and it's like, oh, you have this new awareness and knowingness and you just get to skip to high school. I know. I know. Now you have something special you're going to do with us right I do. now. I do. Um, I'm excited. I, I am going to help. Um, I'm just going to talk about my bedtime process because I think a lot of people are asking, oh, how do I help with this memory? How do I help plug into the information? And so this is, this is my bedtime process. Um, try it on, toss out what doesn't feel good to you, always check in with your intuition. Um, but uh, here's the process. So the first thing, in, in I'm so big on intent. Intention rules. <laughs> intention rules the world. So starting with the intention of um, your, your room, your body, your house, your property, uh, just having a protection layer of angels, ascended masters, or even high beings of light that are in alignment with your highest good, right? Because the high, there's a lot of beings out there that are that are of the light, but they they might not have your best intent. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, your mission is your mission. <laughs> so that's just always my intention. Um, and then I always, you know, let me just talk to that protection piece a second. So so I bet there's a, few, a couple of people saying, well, why do we have to protect ourselves from the astral? Well, you know what? I honestly think you should be doing this when you wake up in the morning, too. Mm. Oh, I, I, I think agree. you should be surrounding yourself with protection yeah. from angels, ascended masters, and beings of light throughout your daily walk, too. So I, so I just wanted to add that in there because um, we're I agree. susceptible to uh, dangers, accidents, car accidents, uh, energy, you know, tripping over energy in both realms. So yeah, so I, it doesn't have to be a nighttime it thing. It does but, not. You know, but this is really important. At least you want to do it. Yeah. Um, The intention, now setting the intention of where do you want to go? Uh, Who do you want to meet with? Or a question you want answered. The other night, two nights ago, I went to bed and I said, if it's in alignment with my highest good and it's safe for me to know, please show me through, walk me through the law and the mechanics of telekinesis and how to move things. You know, and I just wanted to understand it. And I went straight to that dream. I went straight to the dream of... I just picked up this pitcher of water on the table and it flew across the table. So I hadn't perfected it, <laughs> but, but I was shown it, you know, so I can be intentional about what do I want to know? Sometimes mm-hmm. I ask things about the earth. What would be the most healing for the earth to know? 
And the things I'm shown, I don't know with my conscious mind. I don't even know what they're talking about half the time. But a little research after that validates it, and off we go. So it's very, very powerful. Um, uh, Set the intention of, and here I think this is really important, set the intention of before your astral body crawls back into your physical body, uh, before every entry into the physical body, just do a quick um, clean out of the physical body. Right, because when you're not in the physical body, sometimes we don't own it, and sometimes uh, little energies can just little particles can show mm-hmm. up there and, and, and bugger us up the next day. Yeah, and then do a, like a quick astral, uh, just take a quick shower and clean off your astral body from any toxins you might have picked up uh, out in the universe, just like we do for our aura, you know, throughout the day. Again, these are things that are applicable in both the waking state and the sleeping state. But this is my nighttime process. Um, then there are, like I mentioned before, some oils and gems that I have learned uh, assist me in being grounded or being open to uh, this world, uh, the, this astral world, so helping to set the vibration uh, for easier and safe travel. Again, send me an email if you want that information. I'll send that right back to you. Um, and then here is another key is uh, place a journal right next to your bed and write things down. When you wake up, if you wake up in the middle of the night or if you wake up in the morning and there's any memory Uh, Write it down because what you're starting to do now is train your astral memory. It's a muscle like every other muscle we have. Start to train that um, and your body and your mind is going to start to expect to have to remember that. So your increased memory is just like a little synapsis, you know, that you start to clean off. And I'm going to help everybody with a little astral um, healing and clean off too uh, right before we leave. Um, I think it's pertinent even if you don't think uh, the word is pertinent, just write it down. If you just remember a color, write it down, and you, that's going to fl- start to flex that muscle. I personally am not a phys- I'm not good at writing, so I actually pick up my phone and I send myself a text. Send myself a text or I talk yeah. into the phone. Um, and then allowing a slow integration process in the morning of about 15 to 20 minutes. Uh, I think this is key. Allow your astral information to surface and to integrate into your conscious memory your conscious body, mm-hmm. even your con- your mm-hmm. your toes, you know. Um, you can also use that time to ask your intuition for further understanding about that night. So I think those are all great um, awesome. concepts. Awesome. Yeah. Um, and then I know we only have a couple minutes left, and it's perfect. You know, we I had a I have a guided meditation, uh, which is actually a really intentional healing for the astral process and the astral body. If um, we have time, I'd like to take everybody through it. Go for it. Okay, great. So um, what I would like for you to do is just go ahead and be grounded and very present in your body. Go ahead and close your eyes if you're not driving. If you are driving, remember you can pull this show up later and listen to it again. Um, But what I'm going to start to do is um, heal your astral body and just know that this is actually happening. You don't have to understand it. Um, Go ahead and ground your physical body, but we're going to go ahead and ground your astral body. I'm going to go ahead and um, touch, put a hand on your astral body from the head to the toe and send a healing light through your astral body from head to toe. I'm going to go ahead and heal and cleanse the astral memory. I'm going to go ahead and heal and cleanse the astral integration fibers. Go ahead and clear all negative karma for past astral experiences, all past life experiences, clear all past and present body agreements, societal and religious program, religious programming from every direction of space and time about every astral experience you've ever had. I want you to go ahead and release fear in every shape and every form from every fiber and molecule of your astral being, from head to toe, inside and out. Bring light to cleanse and clear your sixth chakra to enhance your astral vision. To your third chakra for power and seniority on the astral plane. And bring light to cleanse and heal your heart chakra on your astral body for the body and spirit integration as well as for all relationships on the astral 
and go ahead and fill totally and completely with light, love, and safety of the supreme being energy. So be it. Wow. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Lynn Brown. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. 